Good evening, brothers and sisters. I'm going to do this video about Revelation chapter 1. First off, I just want to say that today was Christmas Day and all over the world people celebrated Christmas. The problem is that a lot of people, when they celebrate Christmas, they only think about Jesus as a baby in a manger. Now, nothing wrong with celebrating the birth of Jesus. Um, by the way, obviously we know that Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. Uh, they suspect that he was born somewhere in the month of September. But be that as it may, um, celebrating the birth of Jesus, there's nothing wrong with that. But here's the problem. A lot of people celebrate the birth of Jesus and throughout the year, they do whatever they want. They live as they want. They don't live a godly life. They don't live a sacrificed life. Um they live like they want to and then suddenly on december the 25th they want to think about jesus and they only think about jesus as a baby in a manger they don't see the broader picture they don't see the whole context they don't study jesus's ministry on earth they don't study his uh, crucifixion they don't study the fact that he conquered death they don't study the fact that he uh, ascended to heaven they don't study the fact that he will return as what revelation 5 chapter what revelation chapter 5 verse 5 refers to him as the lion of the tribe of judah he will return as the lion of the tribe of judah now the problem is being born again a lot of people out there are not born again it's only after you've been born again and that you truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit will break the Word of God open to you, and that you will be able to grasp the full picture of it. Because you can't do what you want, and then suddenly on December the 25th, you want to think about Jesus, but you only have this um, conceptualization in your head, and idea in your head that, Oh, Jesus was a baby in the manger, end of story. You see, the problem is in our day and time, uh, political correctness and, um, you know, being offended by everything is such a massive popular trend that the problem is that the forces of darkness use this picture of Jesus being a, maid, uh, a baby in a manger and your... Um, concept your understanding of Jesus only as a baby in a manger and they use that as part of a political correct picture because what people don't understand is they only think of Jesus as a baby in a manger and then they also use that as an excuse to make their own type of Christianity by which they say Oh, well, Jesus was small and he was soft and he was just a baby and he also would have been political correct. That becomes a precedent, a precedent for saying, well, Jesus would be fine with everything because he was soft and he would also be politically correct. And that then becomes an excuse for saying, oh, okay, I can call myself a Christian, but I can smoke marijuana. I can abuse alcohol, I can watch pornography, I can party with prostitutes, I can get drunk as much as I want. Because Jesus would have been okay with it, because he's soft and he's small. Um, you see, they create a, a, their own counterfeit Christ, which is actually um, like a hippie type of figure. A hippie type of person. Now obviously that's not Jesus Christ of the Bible, that's a counterfeit Christ. And if you are a victim of that, then obviously you are serving the spirit of Antichrist. That's the problem. Now, if you get born again, and the Holy Spirit breaks the Word of God open to you, then you'll understand the big picture. You'll understand that Jesus was not just a baby in a manger. 
he grew up to be an adult. During his ministry on earth, he was the suffering servant. Okay? And he was 100% man, but also 100% God. So he was God in the flesh, and he did his earthly ministry, and he never committed any sin. Okay? Because although he was 100% man, he was also 100% God. Now, what's important here is that when you read, for example, Revelation chapter 1, you see a totally different picture that, of, of Jesus Christ that John saw. And you start to understand that Jesus Christ is not only the Lamb of God, but he's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? So I'm going to read Revelation chapter 1, verse by verse, and I'm going to explain it as I read on. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it, and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. That's the prologue, the first three verses. Now what's important here is, it's a revelation from Jesus Christ, okay? Um, and then he gave it to his servant John. Now John testified of two things, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, chapter, uh, John 1, verse 14. And the Word of God is Jesus in the flesh. Um, so the testimony of Jesus is about man coming back to God the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. Jesus taking the sins of the world on him, shedding his blood on the cross, um, dying, conquering death and ascending to heaven. That old picture there, you must understand as Jesus bringing unification, Jesus bringing oneness between man and God because there was a we were uh, basically ripped away from God the Father by sin, because of sin. And Jesus coming to take the sin of the world on him as the perfect sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God. So that is the prologue of the book of Revelation. Now what's important is the third verse of Revelation chapter 1 in the prologue. The final verse of the prologue and the third verse of Revelation chapter 1. It says... Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Uh, today, sadly, in a lot of churches, and not, not only today, but in ages past also, you have a lot of cessationist teachers and preachers and ministers and whatever you want to call them, who tell people in churches that the book of Revelation is merely poetry. They say it's just poetry, it's not, it doesn't mean anything for us today. They say it was only poetry to, um, you know, uh, to uh, comfort the early church. Now, that goes directly against what is written in the Word of God, because it says that blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. It doesn't say this po the, the, these poems or this collection of poems. It says this prophecy. The book of Revelation is not poetry. It's prophecy. And it's important because the book of Revelation is the nexus where everything in the Bible comes together. You cannot understand the book of Revelation if you don't understand the Old Testament and if you don't understand the four Gospels and if you don't understand the Epistles. You won't be able to understand the book of Revelation. That's one of the things, and obviously, as I've already mentioned, the the biggest, the the biggest, most important thing here 
above all is that you should be born again and the Holy Spirit should break the Word of God open to you. Then you will truly understand it. So, if you are in a church where the preacher or the minister or the teacher or whatever you call him tells you that the book of Revelation doesn't mean anything for us in our day and time and the book of Revelation is only poetry, then my advice to you is get up and get out of that church as fast as you as your two feet can carry you and pray to the Lord and ask him to give you a new fellowship of believers people who actually take the word of God serious and who don't make it less than it is because the word of God is the truth above all truths okay so that's it for the prologue of Revelation 1 in the next video, I will look at the greetings and the doxology, which is verses 4 to 8.